Hi guys, welcome back. So in today's video, I thought I would just give you a quick tour of my allotment plot and show you what progress I've made and where I'm up to and give you a sort of rundown of what the plan is with it to make it both accessible for my mobility issues and sort of maintainable long term. Give you a quick video tour of my allotment plot. So that's my shed over there. And my plot now extends up to the line of stones there where the mulch, the wood chip ends. And that end I've given up. And my uh, plot neighbours are going to take that over and put some chickens on it. Uh, I basically decided that it was too much of a space for me to manage on my own. So I'm going to keep this bit here. So if we start uh, down the far end here, this strip going from the front to the back of the plot has got my pumpkin patch. So I've got five pumpkin plants that I've seeded directly in the ground there. I've kept the wood chip away while the plants actually sprout up so I know where they are for watering. But basically the wood chips to act as a bit of a weed suppressant and to keep the moisture in the ground because pumpkins are thirsty. So I'll mulch those over with some more of the wood chip when um, when those seedlings are up a bit more. So the wood chip comes um, for free. Basically the big allotment site that my little allotment site is connected to get it from a tree surgeon who um, they, they you know produce trailerfuls of the stuff every day and so they deliver it to them for free as a cheap means of getting rid of it basically. Um, so then along the front here I've basically got a variety of different wild onion and garlic varieties. So these are uh, wild garlic crowns on the end here and then I've got Welsh onions here. Uh, these are um, some tri-corner uh, tri garlic ramps basically here. Um, they haven't fared very well since they've been planted out. They were shipped in the post. Um, most of these were shipped in the post. Only the uh, Welsh onions I got from the garden centre locally. But you can see they're very, very thin now. They didn't take too well. Most alliums flop like these are done when you plant them out. So I'm wondering if they'll pick up, but we'll wait and see. These ones are uh, another form of wild garlic um, slash wild leeks. So with all of these, you basically you eat the leaves. You don't pull up the bulbs usually. The bulbs multiply. Um, and some of them, like with these ones, the, they produce more bulbs on top. Um, and these ones, which are the walking onions, these produce um, bulbs on top. Um, in the heads and then uh, so these were morits and they um, produce bulbs in the, the head of the plant some of them produce bulbs multiplying bulbs in the ground other ones produce them in you know a sort of flower stalk that goes up and produces more so these will multiply and I'll have a whole bed of different wild onions and garlic across the front so these are perennials watering them now but basically they should take care of themselves once they're established and they should multiply I might need to do a little bit of maintenance each year to bury the um, new bulbs from flower stalks but that's about it. And then in this bed here I've got um, more perennial veg so I've got uh, two different forms of sorrel at the front here, lemon balm and some wild rocket. I've got a tayberry bush and a goji berry bush on some Monty Don style wire trellising with sort of um, hook and eye screws um, and wire up the side of the shed there uh, and then I've got three um, globe thistle, uh, globe artichoke um, style plants here although one is a, I think it's called a cardamom, a different variety uh, but they will grow almost seven foot tall basically uh, so I'm hoping that due to the way the, the sun rises because it rises over there and sets over there um, 
but just due to the way that it goes over those should not cast shade in this direction they should cast shade um, basically slightly that way so we should be good for getting sun on the goji berries that need it I've got a rose arch here with the start of the landscape fabric path so this is so I can roll my roller to and walk with my cane and it will keep the weeds away so that it's really low maintenance um, so basically I won't really be grubbing in the ground at all on this site um, apart from on my pumpkin patch and occasionally doing a little bit of maintenance on my perennials um, I've got some little flower patch in the shady bit down here uh, so I've got some delphiniums, a red hot poker and a leo uh, lime plant down the back there. Um, marigolds and tomatoes, I need to go in these. Um, marigolds were 50p a tray from B&Q and the tomato plants were gifted by a neighbouring allotment site, a uh, neighbouring allotment plot, so they're going to go in my big raised bed once it's uh, full of compost. In the shed here I've got my bureau, my little gas stove, um, some shelving unit and the dog bed at the moment is full of woodworking stuff for making the raised beds and um, really it's just got a saw and a table bench in there <laughs> uh, and a big big tin of cuprinol for my uh, painting of my raised beds that we're making so this um, rose arch thing was 6 99 from uh, Pound Stretcher and that's got um, a sheet of this sort of PVC mesh stuff cable tied onto it um, which is going to act as a uh, trellis and I'm going to grow my tricolored runner beans up and over the top which is um, something I got from the next door neighbour plots suggestion uh, then in here I've got my strawberries and some cilantro in my tubs these are all tubs that I already had uh, over the back here I've got my perennial uh, fruit bed um, which has got raspberries uh, and mojo mulberry in the corner there gooseberries I'm not entirely sure what this one here is if anyone knows please let me know in the comment section um, I know I got it from Morrison's <laughs> it could be a lingonbury or a loganbury or something of, of that nature if I remember rightly but I put it in a pot through the tags away a few years ago and can't remember what it was <laughs> uh, this is my blueberry the black currant I believe to be dead but I'm gonna leave it in the ground it didn't uh, survive the very very wet transplant and if you look at the cut off ends there that looks very woody and dead to me so I'm gonna leave it and see if any miracles happen but I'm not expecting much and then at the end here I've got my asparagus so I've just realized I've got two more uh, asparagus coming up here uh, as, long, as well as these big ones at the front here so I put six crowns um, in seven crowns of asparagus in this um, bed I'm going to take the rhubarb and the rhubarb from home and transplant them into this corner once I've sorted this out so I've got my little greenhouse that'll go on the end there I've decided to dispense with the polytunnel and um, in the windstorm it shook down it didn't blow away because the tent peg solution worked very well at keeping it anchored but the frame inside which was broken and rusty anyway and we got the second hand from Gumtree and um, it just shook itself apart and the frames really damaged and um, a part of the plastic sheeting got ripped as well um, in the wind we've still got everything because the anchoring system worked but I don't think it's going to survive and I don't think it will survive another windstorm like that so the compost bin's going to stay in the corner there I've got full access along here with my roller tear and everything I've got another strip of landscape fabric which I can run to my little greenhouse on the end and then I think I'll put the rhubarb in here maybe uh, so this is my watering system basically I put the watering can on the roller to walk it round to the water troughs over here you can see these water troughs they collect rainwater and then they get filled up by the uh, city water basically um, if they get emptied 
as soon as the float goes down it's kind of like a toilet system system so I fill the washing can about halfway full I can lift it still um, with my walking stick I put it back on the roller to and push it back and then I can take it off and use my walking stick to get around and actually water things um, nearby I got gifted this chair and these two raised beds by the allotment committee um, so I have painted those up with the seagrass cupronal wood protecting paint uh, this one in the middle was made for me by um, one of the allotment committee members who's got a plot just over from mine and um, made out of reclaimed wood from the original fencing of the site and this one was on someone else's plot up at the old allotment site I believe um, so these two were, were gifted to me to help me get started this one James made out of a um, little pallet wood that we had this was our first attempt at making a raised bed from pallet wood which was somewhat successful so this has got baby leaf spinach um, growing in it from seed and I tried out painting a plastic trough just to see if the cupid oil paint would work on plastic and it seems to have worked well so I think I'm going to paint all the plastic pots that I can get my hands on as well as alternative containers um, to pop down on the landscape fabric and grow things in as well. Uh, they've got these two empty ones that the goji berries were in so I'm going to probably put some uh, leaks in those I think. So that's the plot at the moment. I've got all this space to fill up with raised beds and um, containers and things. I need to be able to get around in between with my roller and my walking stick and I've been gifted these pallets which James is learning to take apart more gently so that they stay intact uh, and we'll make some raised beds out of this wood as well. So that's the, the plot as it is at the moment. I've got my pea wigwam and then I've got dwarf French beans around the outside which will be individually caned when they come up as supports um, and then the, uh, basically cane and uh, twine teepee that the peas are growing up um, in the middle. So that's the site for now, I'm losing the light so I'm going to leave it here. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to give it a big thumbs up, it really does help. And remember to hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification icon so you get a notification when I upload a new video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Bye.